Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology turn podcast. Everyone, I hope that you're having a fantastic day and you are ready for uh, headlines. That's what this segment is going to all be about. And yeah, there's some pretty big stories here. Lots to talk about. And everyone, hey, sit back, relax as we get started. So everyone, uh, Computer America, of course, uh, happy to bring you ComputerAmerica.com. That has everything from past shows, future shows, everything you need to know, including uh, you know where to find the podcast, social media links, and hey, give us a like, give us to follow helps us out immensely and we highly recommend that you do that so with that being said everyone uh sit back relax as we talk about a number of stories everything from uh policy to new products to um, updates hey you know we really try to capture what it is to be informed in the tech space so everyone sit back relax here we go computer and technology news brought to you by computer america All right, so everyone, let's go ahead and get things started with. <laughs> I think uh, we'll go with you know kind of one of the obvious ones, and uh, not to wade too much into politics. But if you are uh, a citizen in Texas, you are well familiar with your governor, Mr. Greg Abbott. And Greg Abbott, he introduced uh, a bill into place, and you know it. Uh, well, yeah, he got his, his legislature in Texas to pass it to prevent. Oh, how do I put the social media from deplatforming individuals for their viewpoints? Like that cannot be it. Uh, now, there's a couple of things here, and first and foremost, it's that uh, the big news is that you know he passed it a couple of weeks ago. It was due to go into effect tomorrow, and 24 hours before, a a state judge actually blocked it from going into effect. This was not, uh, you know, this was not. Uh, surprising because really this legislation was put into place as a way to bring up a conversation yeah sure one could see it as a waste of taxpayer dollars and just a way for people to uh, you know just kind of showboat and uh, pander and position themselves but yeah uh, essentially the judge blocked it from going into effect for saying that uh, the right of social media to be able to ban and prevent people from being on their site uh, means that they cannot uh, curate their own. Let's see, I, I believe it was uh, the exact words were, uh, let's see, it prohibits virtually all content moderation, the very tool that social media platforms employ to make their platform safe, useful, and enjoyable for users. So essentially, it violated the company's First Amendment rights. Uh, Pittman's ruling came in response to legally uh, to a legal challenge by NetChoice and the CCI. A two industry groups whose members include Google, Amazon, Meta, and Twitter. So they said that today's outcome is not surprising, and uh, the First Amendment ensures that the government can't force a citizen or company to be associated with a viewpoint they disapprove of, and that applies with particular force when state law would pre- would prevent companies from enforcing policies against uh, everything from propaganda, hate speech, and disinformation from foreign agents. And really what they're talking about is this idea of a common carrier, which is... Uh, you know, something that Section 230 is going to, you know, kind of get further scrutiny here in the coming months. Uh, Section 230 has a lot to do with, uh, you know, kind of moderation and the fact that a common carrier, much like a, you know, much like a phone call, a uh, a phone call does not 
uh, moderate who can make a phone call. You know, uh, it's not like you're talking and you say, uh, you know, the F word and suddenly your phone call gets bleeped. Nope. It's uh, it's just purely one piece of data to the other side, you know, uh, ones and zeros. And of course, uh, however the heck phones work. But Facebook, Twitter, and more, they have a lot of people posting a lot of different things, and they reserve the right to moderate and remove uh, any kind of content that they, that they find grossly uh, offensive. So I think this is less about just being a Republican gets you deplatformed. This is more about this is the... There we go. This is the uh, slippery slope argument that if you can't ban people for you know, for anything, like their quote-unquote opposing viewpoint, that opens the legal challenge to say, well, sure, uh, you know, I'm insert very, very, very unpopular viewpoint here, but we can't take them down because of X. He knew this was going to be taken. So, you know, the, uh, the short of it is he knew this was going to be challenged. He knew that, uh, this was going to be blocked by a federal judge and he put it into place anyways, because it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, just something to pass and you can point to and say, here's my, you know, here's me trying to take on big tech, but they're so, um, you know, but they're so big and corrupt that they've taken out, uh, or they've, uh, they have the judges in their pocket, but there you go. A little bit of an update. Um, uh, Greg Abbott, not so much, uh, you know, winning in that one. So there's that story. Let's go ahead and talk about, uh, how about something really cool and let's see something really cool. How about, hmm, I have a couple of these. Okay, how about this one? Hackers steal $120 million from, uh, yeah, from an old school w- or Web3 protocol crypto project with old school hack. So let's find this, uh, more about this thing. An unknown hacker or hackers stole a reported $120 million in cryptocurrency from a blockchain-based decentralized uh, finance platform on Wednesday. They're saying that uh, Badger DAO, and um, you know, and I think DAO, we've heard that from the project that was supposed to buy uh, the, the Constitution. Yeah. Uh, saying that reports of unauthorized withdrawals of user funds, according to blockchain security company Peck Shield, the the hacker stole around 2,100 Bitcoin, or about 118 million dollars, and 151 Ethereum, which is about 670 thousand uh, dollars. They said that notably, the hack did not involve complicated smart contract exploits, which is something that we've been hearing more and more about these smart contracts. But uh, in particular, it's Cloudflare. Uh, they said that it was a front-end attack targeting Badger's DAO's web infrastructure. Uh, saying that, uh, in particular, it's Cloudflare accounts and its content delivery network. When interacting with Badger DAO using a MetaMask wallet, users were confronted with illicit permission requests. Users noticed that the attack was then uh, when they saw that their wallets were being emptied. Badger DAO then paused all smart contracts. So it sounds like they got into the Cloudflare account that was supposed to be protecting uh, this wallet, and instead, it they inserted uh, a prompt that said, "Hey, um, you know, uh, click here to accept whatever," and you know, whatever makes people kind of click OK just to get to their wallet. And they didn't really think anything of it until they saw that their wallets were empty. So a member who said that he was on the support team of Badger DAO told Motherboard that it appears someone injected a malicious script into the front end after compromising an API key for the Cloudflare account. There you go. A core team member of Badger Team, who goes by Jonto, confirmed this was the entry point the hacker exploited. Not a bad haul for, uh, you know, one little one little script injection, and yeah, it's uh, 120 million dollars pretty crazy so they have a quote here from a person who 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 works on the project saying everyone is angry and shocked about what happened and uh let's see goes by black bear uh, situation is really crappy but i have uh, i have hope that we will learn from it and will overcome it i have been involved with badger since its launch and the uh and the work the team has done has never disappointed me uh even though this was again a very simple 
an easy uh, yeah thing to protect against. So they mentioned some of the other uh, recent hacks here at Motherboard. Uh, Badger DAO hack even caught the attention of the mainstream security professionals. Uh, a cryptographer and computer science professor uh, wrote on Twitter that it's funny how little computer security people know about the uh, about the decentralized applications ecosystem. It's like they're living in the hotel from The Shining and they have no idea what's going down in room 237. Uh you know, and this is what we're seeing from a lot of different articles and a lot of uh, different reports is that the people who are setting up these cryptocurrencies and, you know, these smart contracts and so on and so forth, they're not exactly professionals because let's face it, a lot of them are young. A lot of them are trying to jump on the craze of NFTs and cryptocurrencies. They're trying to uh, jump into the latest trend so they can, you know, start a project and make a lot of money. But hey, there's a reason why large organizations have an entire IT staff on hand. There's a reason why you have security professionals who do their job all the time. And the problem here is uh, unlike, let's say, I don't know, uh, the Ford plant down the road, someone walks in and tries to steal $120 million worth of cars, yeah, the cops are going to catch them. But if someone walks in and you know prompts people to access their wallet and then steals all their cryptocurrency... There's not a lot of recourse to that. That money is gone, and uh, yeah, the the unfortunate people who had their wallets linked to this project, yeah, really makes it uh, you know really makes it apparent. So clearly, it seems like more and more is the case. The answer is don't keep your cryptocurrency in web connected wallets. More and more, that seems to really be the case. Uh, you know, clearly anyone could have fallen for this attack. This was, uh, you know, very simple, but at the same time, very effective. Uh, so, best of luck. But man, that's really unfortunate to hear. How about this? Would it, it would not be a fun show without Tesla? Tesla. If you have a kid who maybe for Christmas you want to buy him something that costs like two thousand dollars, and um, yeah, is. Uh, honestly one of the ugliest looking things I've ever seen. Well, Mar Marielle Moon from Engadget has you covered. Tesla is selling a $1,900 Cyber Quad ATV for kids, where it can ride about 15 miles on a single charge, all electric, of course, and it costs about $2,000. So they say that the four-wheel ATV is powered by a lithium-ion battery, 15 miles of range, 10, 10 miles an hour top speed. So not that fast, but yeah, that's decently fast. It has a full steel frame, a cushion seat, and adjustable suspension LED light bars. Uh, in other words, it looks like a shrunken down version of a legit ATV. And yeah, you can see the image here from uh, from Tesla. Uh <sighs> You know, usually I like a lot of Tesla's design, but this one is, uh, at least it's just a kid's toy, a very expensive kid's toy. So they said that also it's currently available from Tesla's U.S. shop and can only be shipped to continental United States. It's, uh, yeah, it, it much like the Cyber Whistle that he put out the other day, uh, much like, uh, let's see, so much like the Cyber Whistle, much like the Tesla Surfboard, much like the, uh, the Boring Company, Not a Flamethrower. Elon Musk seems to really enjoy putting out these, uh, you know, these little collectible things that, you know, people will snatch up. And if you have a very limited run, uh, yeah, they're going to sell out fast. And hey, there might even be an aftermarket for this kind of thing. Let's see, uh, 1900 euro can get you a whole ATV or insane dirt bike. Yeah, no, this is... Uh, this is, again, targeted for kids, at least. And I know that there are kid ATVs and kid dirt bikes, uh, but... Also, they're not Tesla, and it's completely battery-powered, so it, it at least has that going for it as well. Um, my prediction, it'll sell out by tomorrow, almost guaranteed. Anything with the uh, branding of Tesla almost instantly does, so there you go. Now, actually, uh, speaking of, you know, uh, uh, Grant so Sam in our chat room it was having problems, and I really hope that, you know, everything worked out there, but one of the games that he was mentioning he was having problems with was Battlefield, and the fun thing is, looks like EA has uh, really been pushing Battlefield, where it's not even, it's not enough to have games, very, very buggy games, but also very, very fun games, uh, 
Well, EA is going all in on Battlefield with plans for a connected universe. Yep, piece, yep there you go. Uh, they said that, uh, yeah, much like Assassin's Creed, Battlefield is morphing into a connected universe. Think Marvel and all the superheroes and, of course, eventually culminating into the Avengers. EA is plowing more resources into the series and revamping the structure of the studio to support that vision, uh, despite a lukewarm reception to Battlefield 2042. That's not their fault. Ba- Battlefield 2042 was not ready for shipping, but... They did it anyways because, hey, people will buy it and they can fix it later. Now, they said that as a whole, we're all in on Battlefield. That's what the chief operating officer told uh, told GameSpot. Collectively, we are out to unlock its enormous potential. There you go. So, uh, they said that... Uh, Let's see, so multiple studios in North America and Europe are said to be working on Battlefield games and experiences. What that means? I mean, let's face it. Things don't happen in... A vacuum and I'm sure a lot of game studios looked at what happened with the Dota anime looked at what happened with the League of Legends anime looked at what happened with a lot of video games putting out uh, you know little mobile games or putting out movies and TV shows and, and things like that and they're realizing that hey there's a lot to explore here you know our games are more than just uh, one game every two years we can have multiple studios working on multiple things uh, and that's really exciting for someone who, who loves video games because that means that you just get more in that whole universe. Now, is Battlefield my favorite, you know, series of games? Absolutely not. I don't think I've even played a single one. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping that more studios... Uh, I mean, let's face it, there's Halo. Halo, of course, just came... <coughs> sorry. Halo just came out with their latest game, and they have a TV show coming out uh, in uh, just a couple of months. So, it could just be the new trend. They said that uh, Vince Zappala, the head of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Apex Legends Studio Respawn Entertainment, is now in charge of the Battlefield franchise. And he said that he will continue to run Respawn. In addition to producing the original Call of Duty, he has worked on Titanfall and Medal of Honor games. Sounds like someone who really, uh, you know, really put out some good games. So they mentioned that, uh, let's see, so they mentioned someone else here who's also working with the project. Uh, Yeah, so Ripple Effect, which has worked on Battlefield 2042's Portal customization mode, uh, and a new studio run by Halo designer Marcus Leto will help DICE improve the game. DICE just rolled out a patch targeted at the clunky user interface and fixed a ton of bugs. There you go. So to... uh, Yeah, and they said that meanwhile, DICE general manager Oscar... uh, Oscar will leave the company at the end of the year, and he was a former Ubisoft uh, studio director. Uh, someone else is taking the role. So essentially, they're reorganizing, getting everyone on board, and it looks like, hey, this Battlefield thing is going to have TV shows, other games, and all of it is going to culminate into, hopefully, a more successful franchise. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I unfortunately, I have, I have no direct contact with Hypixel, so there you go. Uh, but still, there's that one. Let's go ahead and move on to our next story, uh, just to keep this podcast... Uh, I was hoping to keep the podcast on the shorter side, but yeah, we'll see how that works. So, how about... Uh, all right, read through this on the live stream. Everyone, if you want to tune in, twitch.tv forward slash Computer America, we stream every day. But we talked about this a little bit. A recap for the podcast. Russia and China are attacking U.S. satellites with lasers and jammers every day, says Top General. And my first reaction was, no, duh. Because, really, when you consider it, if you have this device floating in space that can take insane pictures, monitor every movement, uh, that can track communications or enable communications between, uh, you know, secretly between uh, yourself and your, you know, people operating there... Yeah, when it's over Chinese or uh, or Russian space, they are, of course, going to jam, shoot lasers at it, uh, otherwise try to disable these things so that adversarial countries such as the United States, and I would say more so than ever, uh, the U.S. and China and Russia in particular are definitely being more adversarial than ever. Of course, you know, on a 
world stage they're being very coy and uh you know polite to each other but at the same time you can look at uh what's happening in the cyberspace and they they are having a full-blown hackapalooza uh between the three countries so and of course everyone else uh in between but still it's uh this makes a lot of sense. So they also mentioned that the uh, the general says that obviously China has been beefing up its uh, its capabilities in space. Uh, they're building out their own GPS network. They already have uh, you know ten times as many uh, GPS systems. Uh, I, th- I think up there, or at least no, China has increased its GPS satellites tenfold in the past couple of years. And by the end of the decade, they might even have more than the United States in space. That's a lot of, uh, you know, that's a lot of satellites to keep track of. So clearly what they're saying is that uh, right now America still has the edge on them when it comes to space and satellites and communication, GPS, so on and so forth. But China's catching up fast and Russia is looking to do the same. So obviously the mil- uh, the military generals in particular are hoping that they get more funding and more resources to uh, yeah, you know, stay ahead. It's always it, it's always one of those things. So there's that story of uh, if you hear about uh, Russian space lasers, yes and no, just a little bit. Okay. So there's that one. Let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about you know, this is actually a great example. So obviously Facebook is a US company and you have stories like this that happen every single day. There was a gentleman that was being publicized on, uh, let's see, there was a gentleman being publicized on Chinese state media and his name was uh, Wilson Edwards. He was a, he was a Swiss biologist. He had, you know, supposedly he had, uh, you know, multiple articles written. He was a he was a doctor of uh, biology uh, in Switzerland, all that good stuff. And well, turns out after some digging, some very light digging, uh, he doesn't exist. So even though he was on Chinese state media and he was giving uh, statements and you know otherwise just kind of backing up that the U.S. is trying to obscure where. Uh, COVID-19 started and saying that the U.S. is, you know, not trying to get to the bottom of COVID-19 for whatever reason, uh, you know, some kind of propaganda, turns out Wilson Edwards does not exist. And they said the state media outlets, including CGTN, Shanghai Daily, and Global Times, had cited the so-called biologist based on his Facebook profile. However, the Swiss embassy said in August that this person likely did not exist. Pretty crazy. And now, more so, uh, they said that uh, uh, Sichuan Silence Information's website describes the company as a network and information security company that provides technical support to China's Ministry of Public uh, Security and CNCERT. Uh, they said that the key that co- uh, the key team that coordinates China's cybersecurity emergency response. Essentially, what they found after digging was they found this gentleman was a front, and then the people who were spreading the information that. Uh, this fake profile was was posting, they found a bot farm of about 500 people strong who were, of course, spreading this. Facebook said it had removed a total of 524 Facebook accounts, 20 pages, four groups, and 86 Instagram accounts after reviewing public record that centered around the fake Swiss biologist. So the per- the persona's or- uh, original post was initially shared and liked by fake Facebook accounts and later forwarded by authentic users, most of which belong to employees of Chinese state infrastructure companies in over 20 countries. So, yeah, and, and, and but that also makes a lot of sense. Uh, those fake accounts are going to have ties to... Uh, Let's see. If, if they're fake accounts from China, they're going to have ties to people from China as well. So it's going to spread very quickly. And hey, telling people to vet their sources—that that's that's such a that's such a impossible task when you're talking about Chinese state uh, media. So it added that the uh, the operation used uh, VPN infrastructure to conceal its origin and to give Edwards a more rounded personality. It also said that the profile photo uh, appeared to have been generated using machine learning capabilities. If you want to know more about machine learning capabilities, 
uh, this person does not exist. It, it's a really fun site, and I'm sure that you know the fact that this exists now. Uh, you know this. This is an example. If you're watching the video portion, you can see it there. Uh, they said that it's an uh, it's a gener generative adversarial network, and uh, yeah, this is how it works. This whole thing. So this person does not exist. It's a lady. You wouldn't know. You know, it just looks like a random photo. This person as well, another random photo. These people. We have seen multiple Twitter accounts, multiple Facebook uh, profiles using pictures such as these that, you know, hey, they're they're composites. So this is someone's mouth, this is someone's nose, someone's eyes, someone's hat, someone's head, someone's beard, all of that mixed together and stitched together using AI. And, you know, sometimes it just, it nails it. It looks almost uncanny. Uh, other times you can kind of tell, you know, hey, you know, that that's this person's mouth doesn't match. You know, you can kind of tell over here on the left, uh, you know, unless this person's made out of pottery, the stitching didn't go quite as well with the, you know, with the long hair. But it's a very fun style, but it's helping uh, fake profiles post pictures that you don't just type in, you know, to Google, um, you know, uh, middle-aged Swiss man or, or whatever. Uh, no, you don't have to do that anymore. You just kind of keep refreshing the system until you find, hey, why not? This gentleman here, he's probably a plumber or something. You yeah, know, stuff like that. Happens all the time and happening more and more frequently. So, but hey, always love to spread the word about this person does not exist.com. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, okay, so from that story, we can jump over to a little update. Uh, you know, for one of the first times in a long time, Apple has actually scaled back its order for the iPhone 13 lineup, citing, well, slowing demand for iPhones. That's really, you know, one of the first times that's happened. So Apple uh, may be struggling with both demand and supply when it comes to the iPhone 13 lineup. The tech giant told uh, component suppliers that demand for its biggest moneymaker has weakened before the holiday season. Back in October, they uh, they had a production goal of about 80 million units, and or I'm sorry, uh, they lowered the lineup to 80 million units as opposed to 90 million units. 10 million less. However, the company was expecting to make up for loss this year when component suppliers are set to improve. Now, Apple has reportedly told suppliers that the order it was expecting to get next year might not materialize. And with that being said, uh, in addition to lowering the iPhone 13's production goal, Apple reportedly chose to cut back on the iPad's production to be able to allocate more chips for its new phones. But some potential buyers may already have decided to skip the generation. And really, I mean, in my mind, that's not even a bad thing. Like clearly for Apple's bottom, bottom line, yeah, it's a bad thing that people aren't buying a new phone every year. But... Is it really that bad of a thing that people can use the same phone for four, five, six years, you know, uh, two, three, four cycles of new phones before they really need to get a new one? Uh, that sounds like a win for consumers, that it's still good enough, holds a charge, uh, is fast enough, runs all the apps that they need. Uh, but of course, Apple's going to see it as doom and gloom and something needs to be, uh, you know, really bad. But they said that reports suggest that iPhone 14, so the next generation, which is good because 13 was really more of the same. Uh, it's hard to really, you know, uh, laud Apple for what they've done. iPhone 14 will be a major update and will represent a complete redesign of the company's mobile devices. What that really means, I'm kind of curious, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really really looking forward to it. And actually, I, I clicked on that article about uh, the complete redesign, and you're looking at, uh, let's see, so they claim Apple will, uh, would begin dropping the display notch entirely in 2022, so that's good, you know, the notch is awful. Uh, they said that, let's see, and it uh, use a hole punch camera like many Android phones already do. Let's see, YouTube, uh, John Pross, a YouTuber John Prosser also claimed to have renders based on real-world photos of the new iPhone. The new phone model would uh, supposedly resemble a supersized iPhone 4 with a band-like titanium outer ring, flush rear cameras, and a thicker chassis. Uh, they also mentioned that uh, 
let's see. So they would drop the mini from the lineup. Rumors of an under display touch ID, but it's not certain if that would be ready for 2022, if ever. I'm expecting, again, it's just Apple. Uh, drop the notch, drop anything that they can, slim it down, reduce, um, you know, kind of uh, increase the battery size, reduce the components, and call it a day. It's Apple, it's what they do best, just take stuff away. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about, not that one, okay, not, okay, last story, last story we're going to do, and this might actually be more you know, actually looking at it, we might do a special segment on this tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to cover this in an entire segment dedicated entirely to it. And it's crime prediction software, which sounds a lot like, uh, I think it's my Minority Report that has the crime predictive software that lets, uh, you know, kind of police and future crime division and stuff like that happen. Well, yeah, that police have been using that for years at this point to predict when and where crimes are going to happen. And really, it's not as far fetched as you think. Take, uh, you know, take for instance, let's say there's a big football game. Yeah, you can kind of predict that there might be more drunk driving out on the streets around that time. Uh, you know, or if there's a, uh, or if there's some kind of street festival, you can expect, oh, there might be more pickpockets at this event. Little things like that, that intuitively you say, oh, if there's more people, if there's more events, hey, you know, you can uh, you can kind of expect more crime. Well, the software that cops have been using is a little bit more advanced. It takes data points from tweets and, uh, you know, event listings and people and GPS locations and more and more and more. It takes them from a bunch of different sources, compiles them together and says, here's where we can expect to put cops. And then they put cops in those areas. Uh, it's proven fairly effective, but it, well, as far as catching quote unquote criminals, catching crime. But the problem you have is is that it's just as biased as it was before. And we see that often. That AI that is trained on, uh, yeah, the AI that is trained is simply going to be as biased as the data that you put into it. And that data itself can be very biased. So we'll cover all that in a segment tomorrow. This actually sounds like a lot of fun uh, finding out more. And, you know, to give an example, millions of crime predictions left on an unsecured server showed how PredPol, which is the name of the software, mostly avoided whiter neighborhoods, targeted blacks and Latino neighborhoods. So, yeah, and, you know, the article is very extensive and we'll get more into this. But with that being said, you know, uh, I think that's about all of the stories that we want to talk about today. So, everyone, I hope that you had fun. Uh, you know, it was a very fun stream today. Sorry, I got, sorry that I got started a little bit late. That's my fault. But everyone, we have a lot in the works. We're starting to book our CES interviews. You can check out more on, uh, more information over at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep up with everything that we do. We'll catch you here. Let's see. I think we'll be on uh, Friday. I'm supposed to be taking off, which is tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow I should be taking off. But everyone, we'll be back bright and early Monday, uh, Monday morning. Everyone, have a great day. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.